Ashley Brock reading Nora Roberts book Rising Tides chapter 17 and I will warn you ahead of time because I didn't the first time I read these on my original podcast this chapter, next chapter 17, 18, and 19 are very highly emotional chapters high level emotion so I'm preparing you ahead of time it was going to be perfect it was awesome it was so Obviously right. Grace wondered that she hadn't thought of it before. A sunset sail on calm seas with skies going pink and gold in the west was a custom-made backdrop for both of them. The bay was part of their lives, what it offered and what it took. She knew it was more than a place where Ethan worked. It was a place he loved. It had been easy to arrange. All she had to do was ask. He looked surprised. Then he smiled. I forgot you loved the sail. He said, she was touched when he simply expected that Aubrey would come with them. There would be other times, she thought. A lifetime for the three of them, but this warm and breezy evening would be for the two of them only. <clears throat> Giddy laughter continued to rise up in her as she imagined his reaction when she asked him to marry her. She could see it so clearly, the way he would stop, stare at her with surprise in those wonderful blue eyes. She would smile, hold out her hand to him as they glided along with soft wind and dark water, and she would tell him everything that was in her heart. I love you so much, Ethan. I always have and always will. Will you marry me? I want us to be a family. I want to live my life with you. I give you children to make you happy. Haven't we waited long enough? <laughs> Then she knew that would be the moment his smile would be in, that slow, beautiful smile that moved degree by degree over the plains and shadows of his face into his eyes. He would probably say something about how he intended to ask her, that he'd been getting to it. They would both laugh and they would hold each other as the sun dropped red beyond the shore, and their lives together would really begin. Where are you going off to, Grace? She blinked, saw Ethan smiling back at her from the wheel. Daydreaming, she told him, chuckling at herself. Sunset's the best time for daydreaming. It's so peaceful. <laughs> she rose, nestled herself under his arm. I'm so glad you can take a few hours off so we can do this. We're going to have the boat. I'm so glad that you can take a few hours off for us to do this. We're going to have the boat trimmed out within the month. He knows it was facing here a couple weeks ahead of schedule. You all work so hard. It's going to be worth it. The owner was here today. Oh, this was part of it too, she mused. The easy talk about the days. What did he say? Hardly shut up, so it's hard to know what he, he said half the time. It's right off the latest this and that he read in his Bodie magazine, asking enough questions to make your head ring. But he did like it. Figured he was pleased with it since he grinned like a kid on Christmas morning the whole afternoon. And he left. Camwin wanted to bet me that he would run her ground first time out on the bay. Did you take the bet? Hell no, he likely will. But you haven't really sailed the bay until you run aground. Ethan wouldn't, she mused, watching his big, competent hands on the wheel. <laughs> he sailed clean. I remember when you and your family were building this slope. She showed her fingers over the wheel. I was helping out at the waterfront the first time y'all took her out. Professor Quinn was at the wheel and you were working the lines. You waved at me. Chuck Lynch angled her head to look at him. I was thrilled that she noticed me. I was always noticing you. She leaned up and kissed the chin. But you were careful not to let me notice you noticing. On impulse, she gave his jaw, teasing him. Until lately. I guess I lost my knack for it. He turned his head until his mouth found her. He was lately. Good. With a quiet laugh, she laid her head on his shoulder. Because I like noticing you noticing me. They were alone on the bay, but he stayed well. Clear of the zipping motor boats out for a summer evening cruise. A flock of gulls frantically swooped and swirled around the stern of a skiff where a young girl tossed out bread. Her laugh carried high and bright to mix with the greedy calls of the birds. The breeze rose up, filling the sails and whisking away the wet heat of the day. The few clouds drifting in the west were going pink around the edges. Almost time. Odd, she realized she wasn't a bit nervous, a little giddy perhaps, because her head felt so light, her heart so free. Hope, she, hope, so long buried, was golden bright once free. She wondered if he would slip into one of the narrow channels where the shade would be thick and the water the color of tobacco. He could thread past the bobbing buoy markers to a quiet place, one without even the gulls for company. He was so content with her beside him, he used to let the wind choose the course. Should make adjustments, he thought. Sails would reef before long if he didn't, but he didn't want to let her go. Not quite yet. 
The smell of her lemon soap and her hair was soft against his cheek. This could be their lives, he thought. A quiet moments, evening sales, standing together, building little dreams into big ones. She's having the time of her life, Grace Mum. Mm. The little girl there feeding the gulls. <laughs> she nodded in the direction of the skiff, smiling as she imagined Aubrey a few years from now, laughing her and calling to the gulls from the stern of Ethan's boat. Uh oh, here comes her little brother to demand his share. She left charmed by the children. They're nice together. She remember watching as the two of them he bred high into the air for he could peaks beaks to snatch. Company for each other. They're more lonely times for any only child. He didn't close his eyes a moment as he often he owned half formed daydreams scattered. She would want more children. Deserved them. Life wasn't all pretty sails on the bay. I need to trim the sails, he told her. Do you want to take the wheel? I'll trim them, she grinned at him as she ducked under his arm to move to port. I haven't forgotten how to handle lines, Captain. No, he thought she hadn't forgotten. She was a good sailor. As at home on the deck as she was in her own kitchen. She ran the rigging with the same skill that she showed when she served drinks to a crowd at the pub. There's not much, there's not much you can do, Grace. What? She glanced up at him and up. It's not hard to know how to use the wind when you grow up with it. You're a natural sailor, he cracked. Wonderful mother, a fine cook. You know how to make people easy around you. Her pulse went from calm to frantic. Would he ask her now after all? Before she had the chance to ask him, those are those are all things I enjoy, she said watching him watch her. Making a home here in St. Chris can take contents me. You do the same either because it contents you. I've got a need for this place, he said softly. It's what saved me. He added, but he turned away and she didn't hear. Grace waited another moment, willing him to speak, to tell her, to ask her. Then with a shake of her head she crossed the deck again. The sun was sinking, coming close, so close to that Long, long nightly kiss of the shore. The water was calm. Little wallets waltzing against the hall. The sails were full and white. The moment she thought what the leave of apart was now. Ethan, I love you so much. He lifted an arm to bring her against his side. I love you, Grace. I've always loved you. I always will. He looked down at her then, and he, she saw the emotion coming into his eyes, deep in the blue. She lifted a hand to his cheek, held it there as she drew in. The next breath. Will you marry me? She saw the surprise that she expected, but she didn't notice the way his body went stiff. She was wrong. I want us to have a family. I want to live my life with you. We give you children. Make you happy. Haven't we waited long enough? She waited now, but she didn't see the slow smile slip across his face into his eyes. He only continued to stare at her. Something she thought might be horror. Bonnie went into a panic flirt in this summer. I know you might have planned to do this differently, Ethan, and me asking you is a surprise, but I want us to be together. Really together. <laughs> Why didn't he say something? Her mind screamed anything. Why did he just stare at her as if she slapped him? I don't need courting. <laughs> her voice hitched as she stopped to try to study it. Not that I don't love things like flowers and candlelight dinners, and but all I really need is for you to be there. I want to be your wife. <laughs> Afraid it would shatter. Shatter if he looked into those certain baffled eyes on another instant he turned away, saying why not go on will we have to come about. What? She jerked back staring at his set face at the muscles that worked in his jaw. Her heart was still pounding, but no longer in anticipation. Now was right. You have nothing to say to me except that we have to come about? No. I have things to say to you, Grace. His voice was as cold as his heart was wild. We have to go back so I can. She wanted to shout at him, shout to say to them now, right now, but she nodded. All right, Ethan, come about. The sun was gone when they docked. Crickets and peppers sent up their nightly chorus. The only air was shrill to bright music. Overheard a few stars blinking through the haze, and a three-quarter moon shimmered. The air had cooled quite quickly, but she knew that wasn't the reason she was cold. So cold. He scurried the lines himself silently, just as he sailed home silently. He stepped back into the boat, sat across from her. The moon was still low, just riding the tops of the trees, but the early stars sprinkled down enough light for her to see his face. There's no joy in it. I can't marry you, Grace. He spoke the words carefully. No one knew I'm sorry. I can't give you what you want. She gripped her hands together tightly. She didn't know whether they wanted to bellow into fists and pound on her, hang limb and shaking like an old woman. Then you lied when you said you loved me. Might be counter to tell her, so he thought. She said, no, it would only be cowardly. She deserved the truth, all of it. I didn't lie. I do love you. 
there was degrees of love. She wasn't fool enough to think of it. But not the way you need to love a woman you'd marry. I couldn't love any woman more than I love you, but I'm... She held up a hand. Something just had just occurred to her. If... if was his reason for turning away. She didn't think she could ever feel. It's because of Aubrey. Because I have a child with another man. Move fast. So rarely. It took her by surprise when he snatched her hand out of the air. Squeezed it hard enough to rub bone against I love her, Grace. I'd be proud for her to think of me as her father. You have to know that. I don't have to know anything. You say you love me and you love her. But you won't have us? You're hurting me. He said, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. He released her hand, hand as if he'd burned his mouth. I know I'm hurting you. I knew I would. I know business letting things come to this. But you did. She said you had to know I'd feel this way. That I expect you would feel the same. Yeah, I knew. I should have been honest with you. I've got no excuse for it. Except I needed you. I needed you, Grace. Marriage isn't something I'm looking for. Oh, don't treat me like a fool, Ethan. She sighed now. Too bad her to be angry. People like us don't have relationships. We don't have affairs. We get married and raised families. We're simple and basic and as amusing as that might be to some. That's just who we are. He stared down at her in his hand. She was right, of course, or would have been, but she didn't know he was a simple mix. It's not you, Grace. No, hurt and humiliated, tangled inside her. She imagined Jack Casey. You'd have said the same thing if he'd taken the time to say anything before he left. If it's not me, who is it? I'm the only one here. It's me. I can't raise a family because of what I came from. What you come from? You come from St. Christopher's on the southern eastern shore. You come from Raymond and Stella Quinn. No. I come from the stinking slums of D.C. and Baltimore and too many other places to count. I come from a whore who sold herself and me for both a fi bottle or a fix. You don't know what I come from or what I've been. I know you come from a terrible place, Ethan. She spoke gently now, wanted to soothe the brutal pain in his eyes. I know your mother, your biological mother, was a prostitute. She was a whore. Ethan, prostitutes, too plain of words. All right, cautious now, before she saw more than pain, she nodded slowly. There was fury as well, just as brutal. You lived through what no child should ever have to live through before you came here, before the Quins gave you hope and love and a home, and you became theirs. You became Ethan Quinn. Doesn't change his blood. I don't know what you mean. How the hell would you? He shot at her like a bullet, hot and dangerous sharp. How would she know? He thought furiously. She grown up knowing her parents and their parents. Never once having to question what they had passed on to her, what she'd taken from them. But she could, she would. Before he was done, she'd know. And that would end it. She was a big woman. I get my hands from her, my feet, the length of my arms. She looked down at those arms. He looked down at those arms now, at those hands that had bunched in the fist without us being aware of it. I don't know where I get the rest from, because I don't think she knew who my father was any more than I did. There's another John she had bad luck with. She didn't get rid of me, because she already had three abortions and was afraid to risk another. That's what she told me. That was cruel of her. Jesus Christ, I never said it any longer. He rose, leaped on the deck to pace. Grace followed more slowly. He was right about one thing. She realized she didn't know this man. The one who moved in vast jerky steps with his fish cleansed as if he could use them viciously on anything to move into his past. So she stayed out of it. She was a fucking monster. A fucking monster. She made me senseless for the hell of it as often as when she figured she had a reason. Oh, Ethan, help us to do otherwise. She said, don't touch me now. He wasn't sure what he might do if he put a, his hands on her. She said, in a fright, don't touch me now. He repeated. She left her empty arms, fall to her sides, battled back to tears and wanted to come. She had to take me to the hospital once. Because he could, I guess she was afraid I was going to die on her. That's when we moved from D.C. to Baltimore. The doctor asked too many questions about it. I fell down the steps, gave myself a concussion, and a couple cracked ribs. I used to wonder why she didn't just leave me behind. But then she got some welfare money because of me and had a live-in punching bag. So I guess that was reason enough. Until I was eight, <laughs> he stopped Facing and stood still. <laughs> stood facing her. There was so much rage inside him he could all but feel it sear in his pores. The bitter rise of the sun. <laughs> that was when she figured I better start her in my keep. She'd been in life long enough to know where to go find men who didn't much care for women. Men who would pay for children. <laughs>
<laughs> she couldn't speak. Even when she pressed the hand to her throat, as if to push words, any words out, she could only stand there, face bone white in the light of the rising moon, and her eyes huge and horrified. First, the first time you fight, you fight like your life depends on it, and part of you doesn't believe it's really going to happen. It just can't happen. It doesn't matter that you knew what sex is, because you've been around it. The ugly edge of it all your life. You don't know what this is. Can't believe it's possible till it's happening. Till you can't stop it from happening. Oh, he said, oh God, oh God. She began to weep for him. For a little boy. For a world where such horrors could exist. She made twenty dollars. Gave me two. Made me a whore. No, okay, so that was so, no. I burned the money. But that didn't change anything. <laughs> she gave me a couple weeks. <laughs> then she sold me again. You fight the second time too. Harder even than the first because now you know. <laughs> and now you believe. <laughs> and you keep fighting. Every time. Over and over. Same nightmare. Till you just give up. <laughs> you take the money. And you hide him. Because one day you'll have enough. Then you'll kill her and get out. God knows you want to kill her. Maybe even more than you want to get out. She closed her Did you? You heard the raspiness in her voice. Took it for disgust rather than the sick fury it was. Fury for him underscored with a fishy soap that he had. Oh, that he No. After a while, I'll shit your life. That's all. Nothing more. Nothing less. You just live with it. Turn away. Now I'll stare toward the house where the lights glowed in the windows, where music cam on guitar carried by the breeze played a pretty tune. I lived it until I was twelve. One of the men she sold me to went a little crazy. Knocked me around pretty hard. That wasn't so unusual. <laughs> but he was flying on something. He went after her. Tore the place apart. Made enough trouble that a couple neighbors who made it their business to mind their own got riled enough to beat on the door. He had his hands around her throat. He's a and I was sprawled on the floor looking up, watching her eyes bulging off, thinking, maybe he'll do it. Maybe he'll do it for me. She got, she got her hand on a knife. She jabbed it into him. She jabbed it into his back. She says the people beating on the door busted in. People were shouting and screaming. She pulled the son of a bitch's wallet out of his pocket while she was bleeding on the floor and she ran. She never, she never even looked at me. He checked her. Somebody called the cops and they got me to a hospital. I'm not clear on it because that's where I ended up. Doctors and cops and the social workers. He said, quiet. Asking questions, writing things down. Guess they went looking for her, but they never found her. He lapsed into silence so that there was only the lap of water. The call of insects. The echoing notes of a guitar. But she said nothing. No, he was finished. No, he finished. Stella Quinn was at some medical conference in Baltimore. She was doing guest round. She stopped by my bed. Yeah, she looked at my charts. I don't remember. She just remember her being there, putting her hands on the bed guard and looking down at me. She had kind eyes, not soft, but kind. She talked to me, didn't pay any attention to what she said, just her voice, she kept coming back, sometimes Ray would come with her, one day she told me I could come home with him if I wanted, felt silent again, as if that was the end, but all Grace could think was, that's the moment when the Quinns had offered him a home and had been beginning, he said, my heart breaks for you. And I know that as much as I loved and admired the Quins all these years, it wasn't enough. They saved you. They saved me. And after I decided to live, I did everything I could to do something that honored that in them. You are and always have been the most honorable man I know. She went to him, wrapped her arms around him, held him tight, despite the fact that his arms were involved for her. Let me help, she said. Let me be with you, Ethan. She slipped her face, pressed him out. Let me love you. He shuddered, broke his arms, came around her now fiercely. 
His mouth took the comfort she offered. He swayed there, holding on to her lifeline in a thrash. I gotta do this, Grace. It's not right for you. You're right for me. She clung when he would have used her. Nothing you've said changes what I feel. That's good. I only love you more for it. Listen to me. His hands were steady, but they were firm as they gripped her shoulders, pushed her back. I can't give you what you need, what you want, what you should have. Marriage, children, family. I don't, don't tell me you don't need them. I know you do. She's running there. I need them with you. I need a life with you. I can't marry you. I can't give you children. I promise myself I'll never pass it on a child. Whatever pieces of her are in me. There's nothing of her in you. There is. His fingers time really. You saw it that day in the woods when I took you against a tree like an animal. You saw it when I yelled at you over working in a bar. And I've seen it too many times, Camp. When someone pushes me the wrong way, once too often. Holding it back doesn't mean it's not there. I can't take vows with you. Makes child with you. I love you too much to let you believe it's ever gonna happen. You see these cardboard in your body, Grace Murray. It's your heart she really abused. I can help you the rest of the way. He gave her a quick joke. You're not listening to me. You're not hearing me. I can't accept the way things have to be between us. I don't understand. Never blame you for stepping back and looking for what you want with someone else. The best thing for you is for me to let you go. And that's what I'm doing. Let me go. I wanted you to go home. You released your step back. That was if you entered a huge dark void. What do you think? This is all through. You'll see it my way. Then you can decide if we should go on seeing each other the way we have been, or if you want me to leave you be. I want no. You don't, you don't know what you want right now. You need time, and so do I. I'd rather you went on. I don't want you here right now, Grace. She left and hindered it. You don't want me here? Not now. Says y'all. We saw the hurt swimming in her eyes. For her own good, he reminded herself. Go home and leave me be for a while. She took a step back, then another, then turned and ran around the house, rather than through it. She couldn't bear having anyone see her with tears on her cheeks, and this awful tearing pain in her heart. He wouldn't have her, was all she could think. He wouldn't let her be what he needed. Hey, Grace, hey, said the bandit in his pursuit of the lightning bugs. Look at him flash through the dark and I've got a million of these suckers. She started to hold up a jar, then he saw tears. Heard them in a ragged breathing. Now she fumbled with the door handle. What's wrong? Why are you crying? Did you get hurt? She sobbed out breath. Of a hand on her. Oh, yes, oh, yes, I'm hurt. It's nothing. I have to go home. I can't, I can't stay. She tore open the car and stumbled aside. Says the eyes went for puzzled grandma as he watched her drive away. Held with fury, he turned around the side of the house, slapping the brick, dry jar on the edge of the porch. It's all shadow on the dock and strode toward with fish clears for him. You bastard! You son of a bitch! He waited till he hits a turn and ran his fist towards the good in guy. You made her cry! I know it did. The fresh and physical pain jawed her through him. Join her. This isn't your business, says. Go in the house. Fuck you! You heard her. Go on, try to hurt me. It won't be so easy. Teeth bared, says swung again and again until he's picked him up by the collar and seat. Seat and held him dangling over the end of the door. Go off, you hear? Or I'll toss you in. He added a heart threat and he shake, but his heart wasn't it. You think I wanted to hurt her? You think I got any pleasure out of it? Then why did you? Says child chugging like beta fish. No. There wasn't any choice. <laughs> Suddenly, I'm really weary. He seemed to drop set to his feet on him. Leave me alone. <laughs> he murmured and sat on the edge, giving in. He put his hands in his head, pressed his fingers to his Just leave me alone. <laughs> so shifted to his feet. It wasn't just Grace who was hurt. He hadn't really understood that a grown man could be. Not this way, but Ethan was. Tentatively, he stepped forward. Stuck his hand in his pockets. Pulled him out, shuffled, sighed, then said, Women, says it in a level considering voice, make a man want to shoot himself in the head and be done with it. It was something he heard Philip say to Cam, and he thought it might be appropriate. He was rewarded when he had to let out a short laugh, even if it wasn't a happy one. Yeah, 
I guess they can. <laughs> he subjected on Ralph's shoulder, pulled the boy close to his side, and took a little comfort. End of chapter 17.